Well, my friends, it does look like last year's fireworks event is on its way back into Rise of Kingdoms. And in addition, there's a new season of Lucerne Scrolls. We're going to give you a sneak peek at everything that is going to roll out to all of the kingdoms very soon by looking in at Kingdom 2, which gets all of this stuff first. So stick around in this video for the sneak peek at what's coming to a kingdom near you. Is that too corny? Was that, was that corny? Maybe I should edit that out. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms, and today we're covering the fireworks event, Looser and Scrolls, and we've got predictions for a bundle that is probably on its way. So if you like Rise of Kingdoms guides and news as soon as it lands, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos and do me that huge favor of smashing, crushing, destroying, or gently tapping the like button to support the channel. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for doing that. So, fireworks. There is a fireworks event on the way. In Kingdom 2, we have it, which means everyone's getting it probably within the next 24 to 48 hours. This fireworks event is rewarding players based on the number of fireworks that they shoot into the sky. The more fireworks you do and the higher you'll rank, and the higher you rank, the more rewards you'll get. This is a pretty standard reward tier or distribution of rewards for this style of event such as the ones where you're like training, you know, and whoever does the most power over the course of two days, all that sort of stuff. Similar rewards. It's legendary commander sculptures. However, we need to review the ways that you get fireworks, and fireworks do come with rewards as well. If you help alliance members, you can get 10 fireworks. Do courier station purchases, 10 fireworks. Training troops, up to 10 fireworks. And barbarian forts. It looks like there might be no limit listed over here for Barbarian Forts, actually. So it could be that Barbarian Forts are the way that you go infinite, if you will, on this event. It indicates that during the event, governors will have a chance to find fireworks when purchasing items as a courier. Okay, all the things we just talked about. Set off your fireworks to win incredible rewards. And the fireworks event itself has a few rules that, well, don't tell us much more beyond what we've already told you. So... You may be wondering, Chiskel, what is in these fireworks? Let's ignite a couple that we've already gotten. A tiny amount of food and a tiny amount of gold. I expect that this is very similar to what we had in previous years where there were one-hour speed-ups, three-hour speed-ups of all varieties. There were teleports. There were small amounts of action point potions. Honestly, the fireworks are sort of a nice addition to what you're already getting. There's a cosmetic. You can see the fireworks were shooting out of our city, which, okay, that, that's actually, that is actually kind of cool. And if I go in here, maybe we have the courier station active. We don't. Well, how can we get the courier station active to see a few more of these fireworks? Let's just finish training some of these troops. Boom. Courier station is in. In addition, remember, I am going to get some amount of fireworks simply for training troops. So let's just speed this up. This is the account that we spent 750 bucks on to get it into Heroic Anthem KVK. And look at this. We're getting value beyond Heroic Anthem content. So now we can claim four fireworks. So we trained a small amount of troops there, upgrading 1,600 T3 to T4. And that is what gave me a firework each. And as I go into the courier station, you can see mail received, mail received, Every time I'm making purchases here, mail received literally every single time. Up to the 10 times that you can do on any one day. Now that I've got a couple of them, it looks like it's cooling off. There's a few more locked in. Great. Let's open up some fireworks, shall we? And see exactly what we get. There's eight more fireworks. We go in to ignite and let's go. One hour speed up for research. Three hour speed up. This is very much... Like I was describing, a gold key. I did forget there were gold keys. There's a stone token. There's another stone token. Okay, speed ups. You get the idea. We'll ignite the remaining five. Confirm. Boom. The rewards here are fine. The thing that is good, though, is that if you were purchasing things in the courier station, you are going to get some free value above and beyond what you were already purchasing. One way that you can make sure that you get all the fireworks possible is again to go in and look at this very closely. Make sure you do the things you need to do. And once they get to 10, you can't actually get any more fireworks from that activity for the remaining 
24 hour time period or I guess until reset and then boom you can do them all over again. So you do want to make sure you go in and purchase stuff in the courier station getting all your fireworks because yes if I have to spend a small amount of gems on something even and you shouldn't have to you should be able to get things for resources but even if I had to spend a small amount of gems like 27 gems on this gold over here uh, the firework will offset the cost of the gems however if you're free to play obviously gems are very precious you would want to save save those for sure for other more important endeavors just try to take advantage of the courier station pops whenever that shows up so that is the fireworks event but there is one other piece of the puzzle here because you might think okay so you know it looks like there might be no limit to the number of forts i can get fireworks from so this is actually a barbarian fort rallying event i don't know if that's true or not by the way this goes into kingdom 2 to test things first so let's just be really careful about what we're saying here it could be that forts are the way but i expect that there will be a bundle and from what I recall of this bundle in the past, it was just okay. I'll go in and dig through my archives to find the exact amount of speed ups from the bundle the previous year and maybe put a screenshot up here so you can see what it was previously. And possibly by the time this video is live, the bundle will already be here. I don't see it at the time of this recording, however, but when it does go live, if it is at all different from the previous year, I'll do a new video all about it. But what you need to know is that Previously, the bundle for fireworks, you could only purchase, I think, at the $100 tier once. And if I'm remembering correctly, it didn't have gold. So it's good news if you don't need gold, bad news if you do. And it's got fireworks and speed ups and like, mm, meh. I think that in big kingdoms especially, there's going to be a lot of people that go and they buy the bundle because they can. And they're going to perform really well in the rankings here. I think it's going to be very hard to get a top rank in this event, quite frankly, uh, especially if you're free to play battling against spenders in this, but we'll see exactly what those bundles look like, how many fireworks you get once that is available. The next major thing we need to talk about, and this is actually kind of a big deal, is Lucerne Scrolls is here in Kingdom 2. Uh, presumably, this is going to roll out to all other kingdoms. This is Volume 8, Lucerne Scrolls Season 8, already here in Kingdom 2, and this may momentarily go everywhere so i wanted to make a video about it because the premier item in this version of lucerne scrolls is the cape of the war god this is a piece of legendary archer equipment we are going to review the significance of that in addition you see okay a friendly fish pond decorative structure kind of cool there are some edward of woodstock emojis and as we make our way toward the top actually these edward of woodstock emojis look pretty legit as we make our way toward the top, is there a city skin to behold? There is the Royal Manor. So if I now go in to my city hall, we get a look over here all the way down at the bottom. What new city skins do we have? The Royal Manor, 5% Archer Health and minus 5% Cavalry Defense. I think I have already reviewed this in a previous video. But Archer Health is really solid if you're using Archers, and it's probably not a coincidence that for the oldest kingdoms in the game, now they've got Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus the Great, you would want an Archer Health skin for sure. So I think this is a very solid skin to pick up. You do lose Cavalry stats, which is, for a lot of players, a pretty important unit. But if you're all in on the Archer plan and you're garrisoning or rallying, Archer Health is very premium as a stat, and I would recommend this city skin very highly but the thing we now need to talk about is actually going back to lucerne scroll and looking at the cape of the war god because this is a curious item it's 12 percent archer attack and it's a chess piece and i want to point out that although initially i was actually kind of excited i was like oh man the only way you could get that before was through the absolutely pain in the butt total pain in the butt way of going in and either using your universal sculptures on the Cape of the War God. Okay, pardon me. I was confused earlier. The Cape of the War God is for legs. I don't know who the heck wears a cape around their legs. Color me very confused. I don't know why I never realized until this moment Cape of the War God is a leg piece. I mean, okay, so, so we did a Google search. Does a cape protect your legs? The fashion cape does not cover the front to any appreciable degree. 
In rain gear, a cape is usually long and a roomy protective garment worn to keep one dry in the rain. Okay, and then capes were used as impromptu shields. Well, not as effective as solid metal. It was often able to block sword and mace blows. Maybe it is more serious than I thought. The only way that I can figure the cape of the war god go is good is if it's kind of like General Grievous. The cape is hiding four lightsabers. That That's how you make it happen, right? Right here, the four lightsabers. Uh, you keep four lightsabers under that cape, do you? A Jedi you are. Strong with the force. Oh, God. Don't, just go, don't put this in the video. It's just, just, you're having too much fun. But whatever, it doesn't change my recommendation because here's what my recommendation is about to be. This is going to give you 12% attack. It's actually a, a great amount of stats, especially when you compare to some other options that you have available to you. But... There are two epic options that are very good. The Fanatics Tacits are good, 8% Archer Defense. Solid, special talent that, that's 10.5%, which is nearly the 12% over here. You're down by 1.5%. However, there's a Revival Greaves set. There is a Revival set, and there's a bonus. A set bonus when you get a bunch of these items stacked together. Honestly, I do not think that the Cape of the War God is a good craft, because I was talking about this extensively with my Alliance members just the other day as we were working through what would a great archer set be. And if you're trying to save on materials, the fact that there is a four-piece bonus for archer stuff already at the epic tier is lit. It's really good. You would not want to break up that set. And so, no, you would not make Cape of the War God. I don't see a reason that you would if you're saving materials, and most of us are not so flush with materials that we were like, yeah, hey, let's make this non-set legendary. No. I think most players would stick with Revival Greaves. They would stick with the chess piece, Revival Chest Plate. They would stick with the Revival Helmet. And this covers most of your gear on your Archer Commanders. And they would stick with the Revival Gauntlets. Boom. So there is the four-piece bonus, which is going to make up the stats anyways for being, you know, non-legendary pieces as long as you go and you work on these until they're special talented. So if you're an archer player, I don't think the Cape of the War God is the right craft. I do think you stick with the four-piece bonus on the epic archer set, and I think you supplement that if you are going for legendaries with instead the two-piece bonus from the legendary set if you could swing it. And this is, I mean, we're dreaming big here. We are talking about legendaries, right? But the two-piece bonus that you would go for is the weapon and also the boots, and you'd get the two-piece bonus. That would be a solid way to go for an archer set. So the full archer set is the four-piece revival plus the two-piece dragon's breath, which is the boot and the weapon. That would be the way that I think you should go to minimize the number of materials committed to get the maximum amount of punch possible. That would be the jam. So I personally... I'm not going to be going in and crafting the Cape of the War God, but if you are a spender and you do have to spend to unlock the higher tier of Divine Inheritance, I guess this is a much easier way to scroll through and see the rewards. Okay, well, next time I'll do it this way. If you are spending anyways to get this highest tier, the real value of getting the Cape of the War God is going to be that when you complete the pattern, the Vanquisher bundle will pop and then you can spend five bucks to get four legendary materials, which... Sounds kind of ridiculous that that's the value you would get from it, but I actually think that for most players, that would be the most value-oriented way to think about it because I don't actually think Cape of the War God, which who puts a cape around their legs? You got me. I don't know how that keeps you protected, you know? I, I really, I got questions, but I'm, look, you know, I got my armor on the shelf behind me over here. I'm going to stick... I'm going to stick with that for now rather than putting a cape around my legs and going into battle and pretending like that gives me 12% attack. But if you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor. Consider subscribing to the channel and throwing a like on the video. We always bring you the latest, greatest Rise of Kingdoms news as soon as it lands. You don't want to miss that. And if you want to see some other crazy stuff from earlier today, check out my live stream. We were doing a Constantine Card King, but there's a special surprise that takes place in the middle of that that was really a lot of fun and entertaining to watch so you'll, you'll you'll see go check that out and until next time you have fun smashing the kingdom